Hello friends, thanks for coming back to A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. And if you're new, my name is Chrissy and thanks for being here. Today's video is a homeschool tour. A note before I get started, uh, so please know that you do not need a homeschool room in order to home educate your children. Also, please keep in mind that you do not need all of these resources in order to home educate your children. Uh, this is for five children. I am a mom of five and this has been in the making for four years. So it's not something that we just accumulated overnight. We are so very uh, thankful and we feel blessed uh, to have all of these resources and this little space of magic for our children. So we've lived in this house for about four years now and we've always flip-flopped between a spare upstairs bedroom or what's supposed to be this small formal dining room space. If you saw our playroom tour, this is the room. But if you didn't know, we're a military family, which means we have a family visiting often and some staying extended periods of time. So we decided to keep the spare bedroom a guest room and keep our school space permanently downstairs. Although it is a smaller space than our spare bedroom, it actually fits us better and we can effortlessly overflow into the living room, dining and kitchen and just spread out throughout the school day. I'll begin the tour with this wall and this shelf is our art shelf and it holds all of our art supplies with the exception of a recycling bin uh, that we use for art. So we have modeling wax, freshly rolled candles, uh, we have a flower press and window star kite paper. Mini cookie cutters for our modeling wax erasers, we have Falana block crayons and Stockmar crayons and chalk pastels. And this large wooden tray is a place to drop our nature finds. More beeswax crayons, these are by Faber Castell. Our new watercolor pencils by Arteza. Uh, these are oil pastels by Royal and Lanicol and our Lyra watercolor palette. We also keep a space for our seasonal display on this shelf and I am going to show you our current fall seasonal display but I have previous videos that I can link meanwhile for you. And so we've just displayed um, our seasonal peg dolls, some silks, books, nature finds, and math manipulatives. These are some printables from Hearth Magic and they're just so beautiful that I displayed them. And so we also keep a basket here for our big wooden yarn uh, loom. I'm sorry, our big wooden loom. And in this basket we keep yarn and the needle for that loom. Our watercolor jar holder and that's from Bella Luna Toys. Um, more um, oil pastels and then our giant wooden loom by Melissa and Doug. We love this thing and that lives here permanently and then in this little basket I keep our watercolor pigments. We have three art cards here, um, some for an overflow of supplies, another is a sewing cart. Um, back here we also keep our large chalkboard and we hang our smocks. This one, this is actually all of our morning uh, or opening activities. Uh, if you saw my uh, morning routine video, so we keep all sorts of like seasonal readers and our devotional, a little bit of enrichment and busy work. Down here we keep our projector and just all sorts of cords, extension cords, camera equipment, um, traditional supplies that we need like paper cutter, laminator, stapler, things of that sort. Paper on this side that the kids can access and a lot of acrylic paint and paint brushes that they can use as well. In the smallest cart is a sewing cart. We keep embroidery thread, felt, some peg doll materials, just something that we can roll over to a table and work on. Okay, and I'm going to move quickly through our cubbies, but here I keep some uh, craft type resources. Um, and in here I keep like activity pads and just plain pads for the kids to access uh, with their art supplies. 
This cubby is for nature journaling, so a lot of field guides. Uh, we have a paper binding kit in here, of course, our nature journals, um, more nature journaling resources and field guides, and paper. We have all sorts of paper, tracing paper, uh, including our huge Strathmore drawing pads. The cubby next to that holds a lot of our loose parts for art. Um, and so I organize those loose parts like uh, pom-poms, buttons, popsicle sticks, and these little kitchen food storage containers. Or containers at Dollar Tree. And so this one holds uh, a wooden kit that uh, my son got for Christmas. So it has like a tool belt, hammer, um, and some wooden pieces like birdhouses and a car for him to build. The next Tupperware holds stamps and stamp ink pads that the kids are allowed to use. One of our uh, sewing boxes and this Tupperware holds just more wooden pieces and kits for the kids to do art with. Um, and so in here we have various things, a lot of our adhesives, uh, some tie dye, some watercolor fizzy paint, a clipboard. And this bin holds all of our needle felting supplies. So we have a lot of needle felting foam pads, uh, some yarn for our loom as well, and a lot of um, wool roving. And all of our uh, wool roving and most of our needle felting supplies are from a child stream. For the kids to do independent art and kind of just experiment with, I have them use our acrylic yarn and so I have that cubby stocked uh, and ready for them to use because they do enjoy that. Next to that I have our candle, beeswax candle rolling kit and my favorite uh, candle rolling kit is from A Child's Dream. This bin holds air dry clay and various tools for that. And then this little container does hold modeling clay and it needs a lid so that it doesn't dry out. And the last bin is for uh, peg doll making. So here we have making peg dolls by Margaret Bloom. I usually like to keep together a kit for the girls um, for them to have the peg dolls and just like already cut out wings and clothes and yarn and the adhesive for them to make peg dolls. I need to replenish that. This is our uh, stash of wooden peg dolls and our stash of Holland wool felt and then just some projects that I've put to the side that are incomplete and all of our wool felt again is from a child stream. All right, and if we make a right turn, you'll see my ring light, but that hallway also leads to the living room. Um, and then you'll see a desk and our main uh, curriculum and bookshelf. And so we'll get into that now. So here is where we uh, sit Luna's preschool cart and we'll have more of that soon. We have a small chalkboard and a cork board for things like science vocabulary words, uh, scripture, things of that sort. We have this holder here where I have our watercolor pens, our nicer paint brushes. I don't want the kids using all the time or without my supervision at least and more watercolor pencils. And more art from Hearth Magic pinned up on my wall. This is a calendar wheel and we also have a weather wheel. Wall baskets for storage. One is our uh, lost and find uh, type of basket where I drop like, you know, game board pieces or puzzle pieces that I find. And this other one holds flashcards like form drawing flashcards, poetry, things of that sort. And my desk I like to keep pretty clear. I mean, here you just see my voiceover mic, Alexa, of course, and a sticky notepad. Underneath lives my mama basket. And if you want to know what that is, I will link the video down below. Okay, let's begin with the cubbies first. So we have three cubbies assigned to my teenagers and you can see their bin is missing here because they're working on schoolwork right now. Uh, this bin holds a combination of like our Spanish type resources like this Melissa and Doug Spanish alphabet puzzle, some books and also our devotional resources. 
And of course, the kids can come and access this bin at any time, but most of the stuff in here, especially devotional, gets rotated out in our morning um, slash opening activities. Here we have some prayer sticks. Uh, in this index card holder, I keep Spanish flashcards and like little puzzles from the Target dollar spot. Cubby is storing some of the unschooling resources that we're reaching for daily right now. Um, so here just a number line and a tracing pad from the math activity kits for my son are some blocks blocks that I hauled in the last video. Um, and here I have some teacher's manual and our circle time um, finger play nursery book that I work with my preschooler. The bin underneath is all about uh, math, so I keep my children's ac math activity kits by the good and the beautiful in these storage lat latch mate <laughs> containers. Another index container here and it just holds some math activity resources we like to use often. Our hundreds board and the tiles that go with that. And then just a lot of the 10 frames and pattern cards, again from the good and the beautiful math activity boxes. And we have math activity box K and then one and two. And I believe these are sold out at the moment and I do apologize about that. I've had these for a few years. Like I mentioned, I really didn't have to buy curriculum this year because I've accumulated so much. My older one is leaving it behind for my younger ones and we're also just stepping out of that curriculum box uh, this year. Speaking of curriculum, we do have some here to keep us grounded. Um, so we have some resources from Hearth Magic, Circle Time, Fairy Tales, our Pippi Longstocking Family Literature Guide that needs to get switched out, our Summer Binder, which I'm also switching out for fall, and then our math curriculum as well. This box is full of uh, like phonics type resources. So we have Scholastic Readers. Um, we have these like little puzzles, again, that I pick up at Target Bullseye. This is a word tower, like a word building game that I found at a thrift store. Um, we have some of our Montessori pink series resources in here. Um, a lot of leapfrog type readers. I have uh, bingo, which my kids love. These school starters resources I find at Walmart. Um, we have some file folders that I've created for the kids. Um, some of those dry erase uh, pocket sleeves so that I can put printable activities in there, resources that I can rotate through my uh, Luna's preschool cart and opening activities as well. And you guys, I apologize if you hear my family uh, or my dogs in the background. Uh, there's never really a quiet time here in our house with a large family. Moving to the top of the shelf, uh, these baskets here, one of them is storing like a rock uh, excavator type of kit that my son is still working on. And this holds all of our supplies that came with our microscope. Our beloved Montessori parts of puzzles. And then I keep the puzzle pieces in these like hanging organizer type baskets here. And I separate the pieces in these little linen drawstring bags uh, so that each one um, is nicely separated for the kids to access when they need so. Um, again, our microscope, we have some learning resources, microscope slides, and our learning resources bucket balance. A little handy dandy pocket microscope. These things are awesome uh, to have to take outside with you. And then our tea box, which I have mentioned a lot here on my channel. And this is what I use to organize loose parts, mostly for math manipulatives. And on top, I've stacked this random wooden type shelf that I found on the side of the road. Uh, and on that, I like to display our most uh, loved uh, books, uh, but also our seasonal books. So this does get rotated out with uh, seasonal books and holiday books. Resources that we love like Julia Rothman collection, LMNOP, Goodnight Yoga, our uh, books that we're using for women's history this year, and a lot of uh, Bella's readers that she's loving at the moment, and our read-alouds for this uh, school year as well.
floor seating is a must for us, a place where we can snuggle, a place where we can meet for circle time and just reading books. Uh, and so the pillow covers and pillow inserts are all from Amazon and the rug I found at Ross. So let's talk tables. Uh, this is a lifetime adjustable craft table. And I bought these four wooden stools on Amazon and hubby adjusted the height by taking off a few inches from the legs. So we've definitely outgrown this table and I think this might be the last year uh, before we do find something else. But I do love this table and that it's adjustable because it can almost effortlessly go from this to this uh, when my teens need it or when we just you know want to gather uh, together at the table although my teens do prefer to work at their desks in their room for independent work or at the dining table for bigger projects but as you can see the table really can be adjusted to whatever uh, you need there are several heights and i'm thinking of just purchasing another one and then just putting them uh, side by side and that way we have a larger um, squared uh, shape uh, and more depth to the table i also love how this table is so easy to clean we do a lot of art on here and you really can't tell and so I also love this uh, super old but very loved blue toddler table with just random chairs. I have this mostly for my Luna and I move it around all around the schoolroom or all around the house really. Sometimes it's an extra space for our dining table, um, sometimes it's a Lego table and I just keep it clutter free so that the little ones have uh, room to create. So we have two more shelves to cover, our science and geography shelves. So these are our science cubbies, and this is where I like to store our science unit study resources once we've already done that unit study for the kids to come back and explore this topic in their own lead. So right now we have three cubbies for space uh, because we're coming back around to a space study for the second time. We did one several years ago. And so just an overview of kind of what we keep on these cubbies, books. We also keep our The Good and the Beautiful Science Unit studies in binders in these cubbies, um, just random activity books and uh, printable activities that I may have put together for them, all, all sorts of flashcards and stickers science kits here we have a space shuttle a lego kit again more hands-on printable activities like sewing cards flash cards three-part cards here we have our safari ltd planets tubes with some flash cards for my littles to match and they loved that activity during our last space unit puzzles board games and again more science uh, type kits here we have a cubby for a dino unit that we have coming up and normally I don't put out our resources until we have completed the unit together already but my son has kind of had fun uh, with introducing uh, these resources to himself again on his lead. A human body cubby, we did have a human body study last year so again just a lot of uh, hands-on activities, puzzles, and a lot of activity books. Some resources from our spring nature studies, which we do consider that science. So we had a bird study, so just several flashcards, some nests that we made and books. And then we also had a study on the frog life cycle. An arthropods cubby again the same type of resources a lot of hands-on activities uh, logic puzzle cards these are clip it number cards um, puzzles safari more safari ltd tubes um, we also have our the good and the beautiful uh, unit study in the binder and books and marine biology again uh, marine biology by the good and the beautiful in a binder uh, some books puzzles hands-on activities we have some beautiful seashells and starfish here we've collected
more space resources because again it's a big year on space so we have our celestial buddy earth uh, this is a discovery kids uh, planet projector under earth and underwater that's a awesome resource uh, a plush rocket um, a moon phase displayed there uh, this little star is like a magnetic maze and i found this at target dollar spot noah's astronaut helmet that he absolutely loves uh, we have some flashcards. these are our projector slides that should be on the other side again uh, flash cards and then some a combination of safari ltd and wild republic tubes for Christmas last year, I made Noah a an astronaut peg doll set along with a felt mat um, to go with those peg dolls. So if you notice, I utilize the tops of my shelves a lot uh, to display our unit studies and resources. And it's just a great way to engage the kids uh, so that they can come and explore these resources in their own time. Displayed on the wall is a banner I made of the planets and a Cavallini Paper Company poster and it has a lot of information like the relative distances of the planets from the sun, uh, the planet's diameter, the position in the solar system, and orbital information as well. And so we just love these posters. They're educational, but also just beautiful to look at and kind of just flow with the decor of the rest of my house. And so we have several of them hung up here in the schoolroom. And of course, I'll link as much as I can in the description box. In this little nook here, we store our telescope by Nat Geo, along with uh, several of our camera tripods and easel stands. Two materials that we use a lot are the Montessori wooden movable alphabet and the Montessori sand paper letter tiles. Uh, again, they're here up front and center because we reach for them almost daily. Another unit study this year is a study on national parks. And so I've displayed all of our resources here. Uh, this is a study that we were going to come back to several times throughout the year when we need a break from our routine type of work. Um, so we have our uh, Junior Ranger card games and some more Junior Ranger board games underneath as well. And back here we also keep our Junior Ranger activity folders and of course this is for Florida State Parks. Uh, if you don't know about this program, I advise you to look into your state's program. It's awesome. So several picture books. Uh, back here we have a Nat Geo Junior Ranger activity book. Um, a Nat Geo funny uh, fill-in pad. Uh, these are some brochures that my teenagers made of a state park. And then National Parks of the USA, the hardcover picture book, and the accompanying activity book. And the last shelf in our schoolroom is our geography shelf. And this shelf is so awesome and packed with so many resources that I've dedicated an entire video to just this shelf. And I will link that here for you. More wall baskets for storage and so the one on top has um, printable activities that I need to prep or maybe papers that I need to grade and the bottom here has well our ASL alphabet but also some scrap paper and another little nook here for storage so this is actually our Adams um, map of history chart that I just hauled and it still needs to go up but that doesn't permanently live there. Uh, what does are these trays that I like to keep here for the kids to access whenever they're working uh, with something that requires a tray. And so we also have several boards here like our watercolor board, um, our sewing boards, or cutting mats. And so in the past we've stored our peg dolls in many different ways but the best has been this windowsill um, so we make peg dolls i make peg dolls we have alphabet peg dolls weather peg dolls um, months of the year days of the week peg dolls uh, seasonal and just special peg dolls and then peg dolls that my kids also like to diy on their own and so here they're just perfectly and beautifully displayed on the windowsill for the kids to access and so this tower is like one of those entryway type of organizers or towers and on it uh, sits our lanterns for our lantern walk and what you see hung back there is a bow and arrow set from Treasures from Jennifer. And so we've also got all of our backpacks hung here um, when we go out nature journaling, um, my bigger bag when we go out on a picnic and I just need to pack more things and of course my regular everyday purse. 
uh, in this bin holds some of those resources that we like to take outside like um, scavenger uh, nature scavenger cards um, our magnifying glass some fun balls a, a little tote for collecting seashells and then the bottom holds are board games that we're using right now so i store most of our board games in a closet and i just rotate them out as we use them so that's it friends i know that this was definitely a long video i say that a lot uh, but thanks for sticking till the end if you did um, if you enjoyed this video again the best way to let me know is by giving me a thumbs up or i love hearing from you in the comments section if you haven't subscribed please do so for weekly videos thanks so much for your love